Hi, let's talk about your pharynx. Your pharynx is the proximal portion of your aerodigestive pathway. So it's a, it's a common space for both the respiratory and the digestive systems. The pharynx consists of three spaces. A nasopharynx, which is continuous with your nasal cavity. An oropharynx, which is continuous with both the nasopharynx and the oral cavity and a laryngopharynx, which is contiguous with both the oropharynx, the larynx, and the esophagus. Let's take a look at the nasopharynx. The nasopharynx begins at the coani, which are the internal nares, and ends at the soft palate. Contained within the nasopharynx is the opening for the auditory or pharyngotympanic tube, the pharyngotympanic tube is a cartilaginous and bony structure that connects the pharynx with the middle ear. So if you were to pinch your nose and push air, that would provide an opening into your pharyngotympanic tube. You would hear a little bit of a, a crinkle, so that's equilibration of, of pressure. I don't recommend doing that, and I certainly don't recommend doing that very forcefully. Along the superior margin of your nasopharynx is your pharyngeal tonsil or your adenoid. This is a posterior view of the pharynx in its entirety. We can see the nasopharynx, so there are the coani there and there. There's the soft palate and below that line of the soft palate is the oropharynx and that's going to extend inferiorly to the pharyngoepiglottic fold and superior portion of the epiglottis. And so within that oropharynx, we have a uvula. We have palatine tonsils, not pictured in their tonsillar fossa laterally, and then the lingual tonsils. Now the tonsils are going to form a complete ring around the pharynx. Superiorly we have the adenoid or pharyngeal tonsil, laterally we have the palatine tonsils, and inferiorly we have the lingual tonsils. The border between the oral pharynx and the oral cavity is known as the fauces. So from the soft palate inferiorly to the epiglottis and anteriorly to the fauces is the oropharynx. The laryngopharynx runs from the pharyngoepiglottic fold and epiglottis down to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage, and it contains two very important openings. There's the laryngeal inlet, which would be the pathway for gases to exchange between the lower respiratory system and the upper respiratory. And we also have the entrance to the esophagus, which would be the pathway that food and beverage would take down to the stomach. The pharynx is comprised of two sets of muscles. There's an outer layer of circumferential constrictors and an inner longitudinal layer of muscles. That outer layer of circumferential constrictors consists of three sets of muscles. There's a superior pharyngeal constrictor, which originates on the skull and the buccomandibular raphe, and it meets its counterpart along the pharyngeal raphe medially. There's a middle pharyngeal constrictor, which originates on the hyoid bone, and it meets its counterpart along the pharyngeal raphe. And then there's an inferior pharyngeal constrictor, which originates on the larynx. There are two parts to this inferior pharyngeal constrictor. There's the thyropharyngeal part, which originates on the thyroid cartilage of the larynx, and the cricopharyngeal part, which originates on the cricoid cartilage of the larynx. These two come together to form the inferior constrictor, which meets its counterpart along the pharyngeal raphe as well. Now these three muscles will serially constrict the pharynx so as to move food distally along. Deep to these muscles 
are the inner longitudinal muscles, one of which we can see here. This is the stylopharyngeus. It originates on the styloid process of the temporal bone, and it inserts down into the pharynx. The other are the palatopharyngeus. The palatopharyngeus originates on the bony palate and the soft palate and inserts on the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. And the salpingopharyngeus, which originates adjacent to the auditory tube and also inserts on the thyroid cartilage and the pharynx. These three inner longitudinal muscles both widen and shorten the pharynx so as to help during swallowing. These muscles are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus that has three components. Descending from the jugular foramen are the vagus nerves, cranial nerve 10. The vagus nerves provide pharyngeal branches these pharyngeal branches are the efferent, or the motor component, of the pharyngeal plexus. They're going to innervate efferently all of the pharyngeal muscles with the exception of the stylopharyngeus muscle. The stylopharyngeus muscle is going to be innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. And you can see that the glossopharyngeal nerve has a very close association with the stylopharyngeus muscle. It's found upon the muscle immediately posterior to it. That glossopharyngeal nerve also descends from the brain through the jugular foramen and is the afferent component to the pharyngeal plexus. So there are branches to the glossopharyngeal nerve that are sensory from the pharynx back up through the glossopharyngeal nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve will be, therefore, afferent to the entirety of the pharynx with the exception of the nasopharynx, which is innervated by V2, or the, a branch of the maxillary nerve. In addition to the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves, the pharynx, or the pharyngeal plexus, also includes contributions or branches from the superior cervical ganglion of the sympathetic trunk so as to help modulate blood flows. So we've talked about the pharynx, its subdivisions, and its muscular constituents, and their nervous inputs. Let's take a look at regions adjacent and distal to the pharynx. Thank you.